Hello, folks. Welcome back. I hope you're all kind of getting through this election madness just like I am. Um, I think the last time I saw Biden was up like 250 something to 130 or, or 213. Because, oh, why does it feel a lot later than 1114? I have no idea. I have to mark stuff off of my calendar, but that's okay. I can do that. While I upload this. Get this video done. I'm not here to talk about political stuff. And though I think there should be trial by combat to decide the presidency. Just lock them in a hell in a cell. Have them go at it. Put some swords, some clubs, other bludgeoning items. Just like Thunderdome, baby! Two men enter, one man leaves. So I won't get all politicized. I'll just say it'll be interesting either way. I know here in Daytona, there's been a bunch of cops actually all over the place. I guess people are going bonkers. They don't know who they don't know who their rightful leader is. So we'll see what happens. But I'm here to talk about some AEW. But before I do that, um, well, I can't wait until I get a new microphone. Maybe things will finally be synced up. Or maybe it's this video player. I have no idea. Wow, I'm just exhausted. It was a long day today for some reason. Oh yeah, shout out. Mike V. Holy shit. Yep, he was agreeing with me, or he was going on with my comments about Melissa's amount of cleavage and what was going to possibly come out and get her banned from Twitch. And then, I'm not even going to bother pronouncing this name. I have no idea what it is. Russian guy. You, sir, have earned that six count.
And eventually I'll check it out. I think it's just spam. But you know what? Any news for me at this point is good news. Uh, so let's talk about some AEW. Um, it starts off with Ortiz and Sammy Guevara taking on MJF and Wardlow. Sammy Guevara does not like the thought of MJF coming into the, to the inner circle. He's going to fight him. Santana's not necessarily that thrilled about that either. Uh, starts off with Ortiz and Wardlow. This is pretty good. Wardlow's, Wardlow's actually sizably bigger than Ortiz, which I'm kind of shocked at. Ortiz isn't small, to use the words of Jim Cornette. I mean, he looks like a grown man. Wardlow's definitely a, a, a big boy, to use the words of one Dusty Rhodes, the late great Dusty Rhodes. But yeah, Wardlow's a little too strong, um, kind of tosses Ortiz around. Eventually, MJF and Wardlow, they, <laughs> they again, the heel distraction and the cheap shots in the corner, that's always good. Ortiz has a roll through. Sammy Guevara gets a hot tag. Indeed. So with this, they're doing the opposite thing. Whereas WWE does the normal thing. So for AEW, they're doing the fact that the big guy gets beat up, the little guy gets a hot tag, and starts to clean house. Somewhat different. We'll see how that goes. Uh, yep. So Sammy delivers a bunch of knees and kicks. Uh, he does a double cross body onto both MJF and Wardlow on the outside. Oh, actually on the inside. Um, Wardlow and MJF, they go to opposite ends. And Sammy just does the double dives on both of them. Then he does some like weird pop-up kidney kick. I think the wrestlers have to get used to this whole outdoor arena experience. Well, because one in one match, we just saw like a pure botch. The condensation on the ropes here in Daytona Beach have really pissed off wrestlers in the past, where wrestlers have like like fallen really weird and like just stare and like hit and kick the ropes and grab like tell the referee, freaking give me a towel. You can tell because they were like chain really like, what the hell's wrong with this place? So yeah, I think the wrestlers they they kind of have to acclimate yourself to it a little bit. Wrestling outdoors, it's a lot different, especially up in Jacksonville, they're right by the river. It's cool, but it's still humid. So you have all that condensation coming down. I'm sure he gets things a little bit slick. And I'm sure it's pretty tough. Heaven knows I probably couldn't do that. Well, I wouldn't do that, period. If I saw even one drop of water on the ropes, I'm like, that's not doing that. I don't, I don't care what we agreed upon. Um, so with that, MJF eventually is a little too strong. Um, again, MJF much bigger... Well, not much bigger, but definitely bigger than Sammy Guevara. Get some stomps on, 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 on. Oh, he did that nasty stomp onto Ortiz's injured arm. That looked great. And MJF, strong. He knows how to work. Then it was MJF versus Sammy Guevara. They they trade flippy stuff until MJF just whoop, straight eye poke. Again, such classic heel stuff. Sammy does the springboard flippy things. To like a, a springboard flippy double axe handle. Again, Sammy versus the ropes. And then guess who's in the crowd wearing a Serpentico mask? Matt Hardy nails him with a chair. KOs poor Sammy. Ortiz is all alone by himself. MJF puts on, the, applies the Fujiwara armbar. MJF and Wardlow win. I'll tell you what, it was actually a pretty good match. Nothing really stood out. But a solid cheeseburger match. Then MJF just on the way out, he jumps Jericho at the announce table. That was kind of funny. That was interesting. So we'll see how this is going to play up. MJF stood tall. So I don't know if he's going to get into. If the, if the math translates as well. Oh, and then tomorrow I start my new diet where I try that apple cider vinegar and, and like lemon water stuff. I have plenty of water. I probably should drink more water. But that's okay. I'm going to try that, see how that goes. Mainly because Thanksgiving's coming up. That's just fat, fat giving day. And with Christmas, 
And you have you have drunks giving day and drunkness showing up. So I'll, I'm gonna see how that goes. So if you see me, if you see, I might pass that drink around to uh, Iho del Hobo el Vagabundo, who's going to be doing my predictions tomorrow for AEW, since he since he he scored a perfect 100% last time. Might as well have him back to do this. Maybe I'll give give him a taste of that stuff. We'll see how that goes. Oh yeah, that's right. Tomorrow I start that. So I get it tomorrow. Oh, today's I don't know. It's just been, it's it's felt longer than it is because I'm like oh it's, it must be like midnight by now. I'm like looking at the clock. I'm like oh it's eleven something. Maybe I don't think my body's goofed up yet. I think work just zonks me some days. Okay, oh, Rega and Tony Schiavone do an interview in the back. And back in the ring we have Trent versus Miro. Miro Crush. Help me, Miro. You're my only hope. That's what Lana's saying right now because she's getting through table, like, she's going through tables left and right every freaking Monday. Miro, you left your wife. And that's what happens, sir. Hey, Lana. Uh, you know, I'm single. But yeah. Uh, so Trent versus Miro, or, or yeah, yeah, Trent Breda versus Miro. Miro, he just like suplexes. Poor Trent, left, right, vertical suplex, back suplex, just tosses him around. I mean, literally like suplexes him back and forth throughout the whole ring. Um, then Miro, he's uh, Trent tried to mount some offense. Miro no sells. Mi the kicks and punches by poor Trent Beretta. And there's this one freaking bug in this office. It probably came in because I opened up to the screens just to get all this fresh air in. You know, when you open up your house after a while, you almost hear that of sh stale air come out. Well, I'll tell you what, it's utterly amazing though. It's like in the 60s outside, the house is a super comfy sleeping temperature of like 77. No, like no humidity for a change. So the only thing worse than being hot and humid is being cold and humid. But I digress. Um, Trent eventually gets a half and half suplex. And Miro's kind of no-selling stuff. Um, Miro again, he has that spinning slam he does. It's kind of almost like... I don't know. Hard to explain. Picks a guy up in like a DDT, spins him around, and then slams him. So, I don't know. Whatever he calls it, he calls He changes. Again, I'm not a big fan of these wrestlers changing the name of their moves to make it their move. It's the same move. It's been around for every year. It's calling it something different. Unless you think of something like really ingenious. I know the Tombstone Pile Driver was actually pretty cool. Meltzer Driver, at least that it's a combination of stuff, so I can kind of get the tag team names, but oh, I'll get to it later. Uh, Trent hit the half and half suplex. And Miro does that kind of spinning slam thing. Trent comes back. He does his dive on Samir on the outside. Oh, and then, <laughs> it was so funny. Um, on the outside, Chuck, Chucky, Chuck Taylor, and Kip Sabian, they start to brawl. They go off stage. This leaves Penelope Ford. Along with Orange Cassidy. Penelope Ford slaps the glasses off Orange Cassidy. So he takes her glasses instead. Just kind of walks away. And then at some point in time, the Dark Order just beat up Orange Cassidy. The Dark Order as a comedy heel fact is actually growing on me now. Now that they're kind of peaked. And they're not as serious now. Although this, this, AEW is becoming very New Japanish though in their factions. You have the whole Nightmare Collective, the Dark Order, which is like two huge groups. So they're like Bullet Club and Chaos. Then you have the Inner Circle, which is like Suzuki Goon, and then I'm sure you have Luther's thing, which is like like to. Uh, Taguchi's group. 
Taguchi Japan. Yeah, so this, this is becoming weird. It's becoming very, very New Japanish. And Gun Club. Hmm. I know of another kind of club that's kind of like that. So for they use the ammunition, which are bullets. And they, they're called the Bullet Club. Indeed. Freaking little nut again. Um, so yeah. A Trent hit a spike DDT. That was pretty good. Um, big running knee, but no. Mira kicks out of that. Uh, Trent slipped on the ropes. Looked absolutely terrible. Uh, Mira hit the Machka kick. And then the Camel clutch the accolade. Mira wins. It was, it was actually entertaining. You know what? I'll tell you what. This was another cheeseburger match. And of course, after the match, there always has to be after the match shenanigans. Amiro puts the accolade, the game over, the camel clutch, or whatever you want to call it. Back onto Trent. Uh, Chuck Taylor comes in, makes a save. He gets beat up by Kip Sabian on the outside. Then Miro puts the the accolade on Chuck Taylor. Orange Cassidy does his kind of like lazy fall onto them. <sighs> yeah, I, I was never a big Orange Cassidy fan, so that's that's the way that goes. Um, then uh, Jr. has a chat with. Uh, a drunk hangman page. That's the way I like my hangman and pages. With a thing of bourbon and cola in their hand. Uh, there was an FTR Young Bucks promo. Uh, Taz comes out to the ring. Hey, FTW. I'm the, the Taz group is going to be there. At the pay-per-view this weekend. Then we have the... Uh, probably actually a really good match. Private Party versus Young Bucks. Matt Hardy comes out with a private party. He just gets straight up jumped by Sam Guevara. That was great. This is going to set up for... Uh, delete! 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 Deletion match. For... Solidus Gear Locate Metal Warfare. Coming up. I just keep on making up names for it. Terrible. I do have to find it. That's the other thing I have to do tomorrow. That's okay. Plenty of time still. It's not going to take that long to edit this. Um, so with this, we have uh, Nick Jackson starts off against... I always, I always get the private party and street party confused. Isaiah Cassidy, I think. Uh, hits a Mexican arm drag into arm bar. Really good technical wrestling. And then, of course, the so, um, young must they start their double team stuff. Um, now... After a little bit of that, then the Street Profits come back. They do their double team stuff. So the double hip toss, the double drop kick to both members of the Young Bucks. The Bucks of Youth! Um, and that was the crisscross size. So that was pretty cool. And they kind of gave each other the high five as they passed by each other. That was actually a nice touch. I do like that. Um, Nick Jackson, he hits a double, double back suplex. Um, but then he makes a blind tag to his brother, Matt Jackson. Um, the Young Bucks. And do a couple things. Street, uh, they're going to do more double team moves. The street prop, the uh, private part. I put street props. No wonder why. They get private party. They reverse the Meltzer driver. Here, where am I now? Then Bucks again. They they double the one guy, or the, or or the um, I'm sorry, Matt Jackson eats eats the uh, the young Bucks actually go into the double Naga knocker, and then it's the one on two Hurricane. That move looks absolutely terrible. There's no way one person could do that to two grown individuals. Ban that. Ban that move. Ban. Ban. Delete. 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 Delete that move. That's all I have to say about that. Then Cassidy, Isaiah Cassidy, has a slingshot stunner. Hits another dive. Balding Buck. <laughs> That's the only way I know. 
Again, hits a uh, double X handle. They trade roll ups while they trade roll ups in the inside of the ring while on the outside. Every time the person's partner was in, they try to get in. Of course, being held back by the other person, and then they just kind of reverse rolls for a while. Then there was a VTE trigger by the Young Bucks. Young Bucks win probably as they should. I guess it's, it's a good man. I don't know. The Young Bucks lost me though somewhere. Even though I have a Young Bucks T-shirt on. Well, maybe even so I go to eat when I go to AEW shows. I look cool. And that's when they were part of the Bullet Club for life. Pew 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 pew. Um. So yeah, they win. Cheeseburger match. Uh, then FCR come out. They jump the Young Bucks. <laughs> uh, hit the Shatter Machine on Matt Jackson. Nick's forced to watch. Uh, they put Matt Jackson's ankle in the chair. Tully looks great. T Tully looks like he wants to go back to wrestling because he comes in with a chair, sits on Nick Jackson, makes him watch while they put the chair, do the kind of like the... Um, Ankle breaks spot with a chair. The one I, I I hate it when they change names. Just figure out who they were. Now they change their names on me. It's terrible. But but the one guy with hair goes up to the second row. Like looks like he's gonna like jump on that chair. But no, Paige makes save. Glass in hand. Actually, drink in hand at this point. Kenny Omega comes in. Once they leave, yep. I mean, this Paige is looking around. Good for you. Finishes it. Um, there was a stare down between Paige and Kenny Omega. I was so hoping that Paige would break that glass over Kenny's head. But that didn't happen. So we'll see what happens. And this is more of the spirit of competition, I guess. Then there's the uh, Eddie Kingston Moxley interview in the ring again. They can't do any violence because if they do, it's all over for the match. Great Pac video. I want to see Pac. I want to see the bastard Pac come back. Again, he's always looked in amazing shape. Um, then there was the Natural Nightmares. <laughs> I guess the Bunny stole all of QT Marshall's credit cards. Jeez, that's terrible. Bunny has such a bubbly butt. Actually, she doesn't have much of a butt. She just looks like, like a bimbo, I guess. Then the Butcher and Blade come out, beat them up. So I think they're having this match too at Liquid Solid, Metal Gear Solid full this Saturday. Uh, then it was Nyla Rose taking on Red Velvet. This was actually pretty good, and it was probably pretty good because it was fairly short. It was a squash match you won this year with Vicky Guerrero. Vicky Guerrero! Well, well, well. Vicky Guerrero, I'll just say this. You're no Joel, Joel Gertner. I think other people have to get rid of that phrase. You're not Joel Gertner. I digress, though. So. Uh, so we have Nyla Rose taking on Red Velvet. Red Velvet starts starts by a flurry of drop kicks. She's trying to be fast, trying to be off her feet, trying to use her whole body away to take down Nyla Rose. Actually, it's a kind of smart tactic. I can appreciate that. Ever Nyla Rose is too big. Um, she's allowed to recover a little bit. And we can strike, uh, strike heavy. Those The body shots, and you can see Red Velvet's body literally being lifted off the ring. That's not a punch into the gut. Oh, yeah. Body would go flying up. Um, sent, and sent corner to corner. Again, heavy Irish hammers. Now, Red Velvet tried, but again, she just got shoved back. Um, eventually, Nyla Rose had enough of that. She beast bomb Nyla Rose, but then, of course, in the heel fashion, picked her up by the head and said, No, oh, no, no. No, no, no. I'm not done yet. Um, delivers that big knee kind of V-trigger, like the shiniest wizard, whatever um, Hikaru Shida uses. And then pins Red Velvet for the win. For the most part, it was just a semi-squash match. 
Red Velvet tried. She gave it all she, all she could. I know it was just too much, definitely, to be healing this. I'll tell you what. AEW is learning what to do with their women, at least. So it's getting better. There is marked improvement. So this was another cheeseburger match. Whoa. Vicky Guerrero comes out. Well, well, well. Listen, Vicky, I have some respect for you. I won't say you're more tongue-in-cheek than a lesbian orgy. So, yeah. Um, then, of course, there's a little brawl between Nyla Rose and Hikaru Shida on the outside. Uh, they had to be broken up because Shida was watching. Darby does another weird jackass promo where he gets, like, run over by a car or something with his face painted on it. It's getting weird. Then the final match, kind of the main event, which was only like 10 minutes long. It was a dark order, so you had 10 John Silver, who's, who's, who's very quickly, by sheer force of personality, is becoming a person to watch in AEW. And Colt Cabana, boom, boom, Colt Cabana, taking on Cody and the, and the, pew, and the, well, actually, I should do this, the gun club. So I'll tell you what. Austin's a spinning image of his dad. Billy Gunn still looks jacked somehow. Maybe he's drinking apple cider vinegar too. Who knows? Um, Cody goes right after John Silver. John Silver kind of takes most of the brunt of the action. Um, then Cabana comes in versus Billy Gunn. Billy Gunn the headlock, shoulder tackle. However, Colt hits the atomic elbow right on the top of the skull. Of Billy Gunn. Now ten get ten gets in. He and Austin Gunn get into it. Cody really sets most of this ma match out. Austin Gunn again, really quick match. Ten minute match was is nothing for like a six man tag. Um, Austin Gunn hits the quick draw. Um, John Silver's just freaking squirrel eating coffee grinds. Um, I don't know what else to say about that. So yeah, um, this is probably like the the dull smash. This was a ham sandwich. Uh, Cody Rhodes and cuts a promo after because the Dark Horse from the ring. Orange Cassidy beats up John Silver. Cody cuts a promo on Darby Allen. Says, hey, I brought you in. You deserve this shot. Let's go at it. Um, that was AEW. I'll tell you what. It was weird. Like the last match just seemed like a like a throwaway match. They didn't really need need that. Overall, it was a cheeseburger show. And that's it. So tomorrow we're going to have Iho Del Hobo El Vagabundo Vente Cinco show up. In case Cinco Ocho Dos will be here. I'm going to give his predictions for all Elite Wrestling's full gear. I'm sure I'll come up with another ridiculous name for it, but that's okay. Um, Saturday, uh, Friday is still going to be Red Wine and Pizza Friday for SmackDown. And then Saturday night, I'm going to have an Asian-inspired pan pizza. Indeed. While I watch Full Metal Gear Solid, I'll be doing a reaction. It's going to be a little bit late because I have to work. Until 8.30. So I'll be here about 8.45. I'll still probably catch most of it. If not, I can always catch the highlights later. Um, there's a lot of matches you're like, meh. This could have been on on um, Dynamite. Or even be the main event for, for AEW Dark. So again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. And take care, everyone. And, and whoever becomes president in the next couple of days, please don't riot. Or at least don't riot here in Daytona Beach. Bye.